Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 193 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of complex PCI in the setting of non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. The patient was a 57-year-old gentleman who presented with ongoing chest pain and was found to have increased troponins and non-ST elevation on the EKG. Uh, he was uh, tachycardic in the 130s with a blood pressure of 120 over 90 millimeters mercury and was sent for emergent cardiac cath. The procedure was performed through femoral access and demonstrated occluded proximal LAD with some disease in the circumflex. And there was also a hazy lesion in the mid right coronary artery with some extension in the proximal right coronary. So we decided to start with uh, the occluded LAD. We used the workhorse guide wire, but the wire could not cross uh, through the occlusion and kept on knuckling. So we switched for a polymer jacket, a C on black, and that wire would send manipulation, successfully advanced uh, through the occlusion, restoring some undergrade flow after ballooning with a small balloon. So we now have undergrade flow. The wire is actually in a large diagonal branch. There is some thrombus, and there is now TIMI, uh, one TIMI2 flow into the LAD. The problem is that uh, this is a bifurcation lesion. There is significant disease in the ostium of the diagonal branch, which is fairly large. There is disease in the LAD, both in the proximal as well as the mid. So this is a case of a bifurcation lesion in which we have a large side branch that needs to be preserved. And the risk of occlusion is high given the significant osteal stenosis. So we decided to use a two-stem strategy, although those strategies can be more time-consuming compared to provisional standing. We ballooned both vessels uh, with uh, a 2.5 millimeter balloon that seemed to expand well, and then uh, delivered um, um, a stand in the diagonal after doing uh, intravascular ultrasound. I was of the diagonal, demonstrated some diffuse disease. There was plaque approximately, but not much calcium. It was mainly soft plaque. And the lesion extended all the way into the LED. So we positioned uh, the stand, the 2.5 by 18 millimeter drag eluting stand, from the LED into the diagonal. The stand was deployed. And then uh, we confirmed that we had good distal flow before crushing it with a balloon that had been placed before, 2.5 by 30 millimeter balloon. And then we were able to rewire. We advanced uh, a small balloon into the circumflex, into the sequential kissing, first into the diagonal branch, then into the LAD, and then together. So that was the first kiss. We then placed uh, a stand into the LAD, going all the way from the proximal to the mid. We used a different view to make sure we covered the proximal LAD lesion. And then uh, after using the proximal optimization, we were able to rewire into the circumflex and did the second kissing balloon inflation. 2.5 balloon into the diagonal, then in the LAD, then both together. So the result seemed to be okay, although the stents didn't seem perfect in the proximal and mid LAD. So we did IVUS again. And we do see that uh, um, distally there's some residual disease that was not covered. We debated about covering that. And then uh, some stand under expansion, although there's significant proximal remodeling in the LAD. And then uh, even the stent proximally, there's still room for some under expansion, but the stent goes essentially all the way to the um, ostium of the left LAD. So we placed another short stent distally, and then uh, post-dilated with a 3.5 millimeter balloon, the proximal LAD, and that provided a nice result. We do have uh, well-expanded stents uh, in the mid LAD all the way to the proximal LAD. And this was the final result. We did have a very good TIMI3 flow in both the diagonal as well as the LAD. And the patient did remain stable throughout the procedure. However, he continued to have chest discomfort. Although there was some improvement, he continued to have significant chest discomfort. And the question was about treating the right coronary artery. So since the lesion appeared to be hazy, we decided to treat the RCA as well. 
which was easily wired. We use an Amplatz guide from femoral axis, intravascular ultrasound coming from distal to proximal, so the very large vessel, one, two, three, four, five millimeter vessel. And then there's a significant eccentric plaque, which is uh, fairly severe in the middle segment. And then extends with disease all the way to the ostium. So we placed uh, a 4.5 by 30 millimeter drag eluting stent, which was deployed. But then the distal edge uh, didn't look perfect, neither did the proximal edge. So we decided to cover distally with another short uh, stand and then proximally with another stand. And this was the, the final result, showing good flow into the right coronary artery. There was some transient nori flow that resolved by giving some intracoronary nicardipine. And we do have nice back flow into the aorta. This is the IVUS on the right coronary artery going all the way to the ostium. We do see a well-expanded stand, and we also see that the stand uh, went uh, all the way into the aorta. However, the patient remained tachycardic, although his blood pressure was maintained. So we decided to do a right heart catheterization, in which he had an RA pressure of 20, PA of 52 over 28, a wedge of 34, and most importantly, his cardiac index was only 1.4. So the patient was in cardiogenic shock, and that's why actually he was obtunded. He was not uh, uh, responding very well. And as a result, we placed hemodynamic support, an Impella CP device, following which he went to the intensive care unit. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that even in emergent cases, a two-stand strategy can be used for bifurcation lesions. In this case, we did do uh, a decay crash, and this was achieved with fairly low fluoroscopy time and radiation dose. Of course, what helped here is that the lesion was fairly soft and rewirings were fairly easy. IVUS was important to achieve a good expansion of the stents and avoid geographic miss. And then this patient, although he was normotensive, he was tachycardic, and the right heart demonstrated a very low cardiac index of 1.4. So right heart cath can be an essential for the diagnosis of shock, which sometimes can be in patients who maintain their blood pressure. A subsequent echo showed an ejection fraction of 10% in this patient, and hemodynamic support was critical for the subsequent improvement. Thank you.